Hey, is it time to brush up on your driving skills? I'm Eleanor Shano, and tonight on HYS Weekly, we are going to help you make the road a safer place to be. We'll even tell you how to get a discount on your auto insurance. And then coming up later, we've got a lesson on how you can get organized. And we're taking your phone calls all coming up next on HYS Weekly. Tonight is your chance to vent your anger and your frustrations about all those old people out on the road. Seriously, it is um, a subject that can be argued. Uh, we've been talking and hearing a lot about the possibility someday of age-triggered retesting. Uh, this morning, early this morning, it was a breakfast meeting. I, I talked to several hundred retired executives and the subject came up and I said, how do you feel about age triggered you know retesting to drive an automobile well half of the people in the room put their hands up that's one of the things we're going to be examining tonight i want you to meet my guests to my left is leo parisi and uh jay frederick they are partners in a company called seniors for safe driving welcome gentlemen and what I didn't tell you is half the hands went up in the room. Then I said, okay, at what age should we mandate that people should have to be retested for driving? Oh, well, you could have heard a pin drop. Man in the front row said, well, I don't know, but somebody at least 10 years older than I am. You think this will <laughs> ever happen? Well, we think that uh, the bill probably will go nowhere. And the reason is it's probably political suicide uh, for the individuals introducing the legislation. So uh, Jay and I both have discussed this and uh, we don't think that the bill has a chance. Okay, but realistically, there is no question that age does take its toll on, on the senses. I mean, your, your vision fails a little bit. Hearing isn't what it used to be. It's common sense that if you are not able to see very well, if you can't hear, that it maybe is not too safe to be behind the wheel of an automobile. Uh, you, you have a point there, but if you start setting age limitations, as the gentleman said this morning, 10 years older than I am, if you ask a 16-year-old how old should it be, they'll tell you 50. If you ask a 30-year-old, they'll tell you 65. As you, you, you get the progression here, it's always older than we are. Of so. course. Uh, now, now, your course is called, um, wait, I, I have it written down we here. We teach a driver improvement program for mature operators. Mature, that's, I like that, yes. I like that. Let's get rid of that old senior no, citizen no, thing. No, thing. Mature about adults, we are mature adults. I am going to have a crusade of one to get rid of the term seniors. I am a mature adult. That's Thank exactly you very right. much. Your course is called Managing Visibility Time and Space. Who picked that name and why? <laughs> Managing Visibility Time and Space. Dr. Frank Kennel, who uh, Dr. Frank now is uh, in his early 80s and and still very active and still working. He's been trying to retire and no one will let him. He's considered the father of modern highway safety in our country. Uh -huh. And uh, he wrote this course called Managing Visibility Time and Space. It's uh, put on by the American Automobile Association. Not only is it entertaining, it's extremely informative. A lot of things have changed, uh, at least since, since I learned to drive. Uh, automotive technology has changed. There are a lot of new gadgets. A lot more cars on the road right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess a, a, a refresher course would be a good idea for a lot of us. Absolutely. Uh, we do a segment on uh, airbag safety. Uh, you know, that's an innovation that, that has just occurred within the last six or seven years. We also do a very informative segment on anti-lock braking. People buy a car, the salesman tells them it has anti-lock brakes, but they don't tell you that you have to change your driving habits to drive a car with anti-lock brakes in an emergency. 
and it's very interesting. Uh, we normally ask the class how many people have analog brakes, and about a third will say they do, and the next third will say they don't, and the other third says, I don't know. And it's critical if you own a car with analog brakes that you know how to drive it. Guess what? I don't know if I do or not. Our phone lines are open, 683-3505. Any, any questions, any comments you have on, on how old is, is too old to drive a car? Statistics, do you have any handy? And who, who causes the most accidents in this country? What age group? We do a comparative study between the mature operator and the young novice driver. And if you take the group between the ages of 16 and 20, they make up 22% of all the drivers and yet they are involved in 43% of all the collisions. Those over the age of 65 make up 17% of the drivers, and they're involved in 21% of all the collisions. Mm -hmm. So, and, and those two groups right there on either end of the uh, spectrum are probably the most dangerous categories to be in. You have, a, you have a student manual, uh, you cover a lot of things, uh, the, whole, the whole thrust of this course is to be a safer driver. Absolutely. Now what about some of the things that happen to us as we grow older? Vision. My vision isn't that great during the day and at night it, it's terrible. One of the things that we're most proud of that we do with our class, uh, we try to reassure, uh, reassure the senior and one of the things that most seniors think that they can't do is see at night. Mm -hmm. And what's happened, they've misinterpreted that situation one night when they turned 65 years of age, they were driving on a wet road with the glare off the blacktop, mm -hmm. and they said, oh my God, it's finally happened to me, I can't see. Mm -hmm. And I have news for you folks, there's hope because that group of people between the ages of 16 and 20 mm -hmm. with perfect 20-20 vision still have problems at night. They can't see very well under those conditions right. either. And we find through our testing that about 70 percent of the seniors mm -hmm. can certainly see well enough to drive at night. So just don't uh, hang up the car keys just because you're having trouble at night. That's right. Quickly, exactly. what, about, what about hearing? Now I know some people are hearing impaired and you know it, it's really important to be able to, to hear that ambulance coming down the street and to hear the horn honking. Absolutely. Uh, the cars are built so soundproof today that you really need to use your hearing senses as much as you can. And there is a, uh, a phone number, and I wish I had it with me, but there is a person who makes a, a tool that flashes on your dashboard if you're hearing impaired when an emergency vehicle approaches. Okay. What are some of the risks that you face every time you drive, and, and how can you avoid them? We're going to have more on becoming a safer driver. Plus, we are taking your phone calls when AgeWise Weekly continues. Pay a visit to Bayview Retirement Village, where the residents are very friendly. Do you mind if I sit down? Sit, stand, do whatever you like. You can burn to the ground for all I can. <laughs> where dining is always an experience. This meat isn't very good. Never is. What is it? Squiddle. And it's a place where you're only as old as you feel. Well, I want to do something young. Good idea. Go and play in the traffic. Join in the fun. Waiting for God. Back-to-back -back episodes Thursday night at 7 on WQEX 16. Britain's Finest wants you for a good time. I beg your pardon? Just stay fit. Exercise, fresh air, plenty of roughage. And take your job seriously. Who knows what danger lurks in the fearsome watches of the night? It is our mission to seek it out. And boldly go where no man has gone before. <laughs> Join the ranks of fun with Rowan Atkinson and walk the thin blue line. Thursday night at 11 and 11.30 on WQEX 16. Hi, I'm Larry Weld. Here are some of the highlights of this week's show. I'm coming home, I've done my time. Now I've got to know what is and isn't mine. Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 5. Underwritten by Canterbury Place.
changed the name of their company from uh, Seniors for Safe Driving to Mature Adults for Safe Driving. You know, we're talking about maybe some people as they grow older not being too safe behind the wheel of an automobile. Actually, gentlemen, just saw that yesterday that Pittsburgh is the safest city in the country for pedestrians. So that might, must mean that we're doing something right. Either that or we've become so good at just dodging automobiles in this city. <laughs> we're the city of jaywalkers. You know what's really interesting, Eleanor? Um, seniors do have some problems driving. And 43% of all collisions by seniors that seniors are involved in are side impact. It means we run stop signs, uh, we go through red lights, and we turn Rush Limbaugh on, you know, at noon, and he gets us so upset that we don't pay <laughs> attention to what we're doing Left when we're driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, how about the cellular phones? Oh, yeah. Ah, St menace. Statistics menace. are out there. Is, if you're talking on a cellular phone, you're as dangerous as a drunk driver. That's Absol the latest I'm statistics. Sure. Yeah. I am sure. Let's go to the phones. Caller, line six, go ahead. Uh, Welcome. Yes, hi. In regard to mature drivers, right. I do not fear them as much as I fear the young driver who has to tailgate, who has to be rude. If there are problems with the mature driver, they make up for it in courtesy. Additionally, with your own parents, when they're older, the family can find a way without taking away their dignity and that driver's license to let wow. them keep the license and not drive. They've maintained the feeling that they're still in control, and yet they're not driving on the road. Amen. We cannot I, I, hurt them in the manner of just saying, you're, you're used up. Ah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I spend a lot of time out speaking to, to, to groups of people, and we always talk about the importance of preserving your independence. And don't give up that driver's license. Right. We call it your ticket to independence. Right. That's exactly right. We do a segment in our program to encourage uh, seniors through physical fitness to help maintain that driver's license as long as they possibly can. And incidentally, the oldest individual to take our class, 94 years young and still driving, uh, a little town up north in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania, she's a remarkable woman. And well, she said... And Excuse me, on the way out the door, she said, I'll see you in three years. Oh, so she will be back. Oh, bless you. Am I? That's wonderful. Probably aren't too many uh, uh, throughways in Ridgeway, though. I mean, not, not a lot of cars up there, huh? They have a red light now. <laughs> okay. Uh, your, your course, and I know our viewers are interested in knowing, uh, they come to you, or you go to them, or how does it work? Donner, we're teaching these classes from Erie all the way south to Bridgeville and McKeesport, uh, mm -hmm. Meadville, Sharon, Butler County. Okay, and it's and group instruction. Exactly, right. we're doing them at automobile dealerships and hospitals. Okay. And uh, a lot of the cost for the courses is, is uh, subsidized by the hospital and the auto dealers. We know a great deal about some of the risks involved in, in winter driving, about snow and ice, but now coming into the warm weather season, what are some things, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that there are more kids on the street, that we have to be aware of our surroundings, and maybe make sure that f for security that we keep our windows up these days. That's Anything right. else? Uh, well, sure, you know, this is travel season, mm -hmm. and th this is when you don't want to be getting in your car and trying to stretch that, uh, two-day trip in the one day, mm -hmm. trying to make uh, a 12-hour drive when you could do it in two six-hour increments. Uh, we suggest that you stop every three to four hours when you're taking a trip, that you uh, walk around the car, exercise during that few minutes that you take to switch drivers, uh, if you can afford to switch drivers, if you have two or three drivers. Hey, Jay, and we want the new driver to come from the back seat. That's right. To come from the back That's seat. That's right. Think of this uh, when you're out with your husband and you're driving on a trip, you as a passenger are probably driving as much as the driver is. Ah, and <laughs> a, little, because, a little more stressed. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Caller, line five, go ahead. We have a car with anti lock brakes. What's the difference in the driving with the anti lock brakes? Okay. Uh, let me take now, it. please, Jay, you're the expert. Do you do that segment? In an emergency situation, in a car equipped with analog brakes, what you need to do is put your foot on the brake pedal and push it to the floor and hold it. It's that simple. The wheels will not lock up. The wheels are, have sensors in them, and they're monitored so that they will not 
uh, lock and go put you into a slide. That's the whole concept behind analog brakes. Got to thank that caller for asking that question. Very I good was, question. I was almost embarrassed to. Yeah. I kind of thought Don't I guess be. I should know the <laughs> answer. A uh, hundred thousand accidents every year from drowsiness, from people falling asleep behind the wheel. Those of us who live in Pennsylvania and get to drive on our beloved turnpike, and I certainly don't want to scare anyone out there, but this is kind of interesting. 51% of all the collisions on the Pennsylvania turnpike, someone fell asleep at the wheel. Uh, I believe Incredible. it. Incredible. I read that there's a new com computer coming out now that's going to be able to, um, I, I, I don't even know how it's going to work, and it's not on the market yet, so I guess in the meantime, you just have to do what the, the gentleman suggested and, and make sure that you, when you do feel that you're getting drowsy, pull over to the side. Caller, line eight, go ahead. Line eight, are you out there? Oh, yes. Um, I just finished a course, which was excellent, by the way, at the Butler Community Hospital mm -hmm. as a senior. Okay. I would like to suggest every age group should attend such a course, particularly, I might say, the younger group, 16 to 20. Okay, and there's a real good reason why you should take it if you're over 55, because you get a rebate on your insurance. That's, That's correct. Right. It can be up to as high as 10%. Mm. Uh, mm. Most companies are 5%. There are a few that give 7%. But that's a significant savings over a three-year period. And this is a one-day course? Two three-and-one-half-hour sessions, usually two mornings or two evenings uh, okay. consecutive. Is it a hands-on course? No, it's, it, it, there is no testing either, by the way, Eleanor. Okay. It, it, there's no pass-fail. Okay. If you can make it to the course, you'll pass. Okay, you have an 800 number? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. 800-559-4880. And this is a course for mature adults, safe driving course for mature adults. I want to thank Leo Parisi and Jay Frederick from the AAA Driver Inf Improvement Program for joining us this evening and for helping us navigate some of the new rules of the road. But don't you go away because my next guest is going to help you get organized. Do you keep your business receipts in a shopping bag? Write phone numbers on post-it notes and then can't remember where you stuck them? Well, don't go away. Organizational consultant Sylvia Jesse is coming up next on AgeWise Weekly. The Unsolved Mysteries of Home Improvement. Take this old house with Steve and Norm. Now, what lottery did these homeowners win? I mean, who can afford all those contractors and subcontractors? Sure, the house looks great, Mr. Scaife. Then there's home time with Dean and Robin. Now, how do they do it? No, it, it's not what they do, but how can any couple merrily go about all this work together without killing one another? Can't be done, total mystery. Wednesday night, it's Fantasy Home Improvement with This Old House at 8.30 and Home Time at 9, both here on WQEX 16. You read about them in the paper, hear them on local radio. You might catch a quick soundbite on the evening news. But if you're looking for more than a glimpse of who and what is making news in Pittsburgh, tune in to Cullen Devlin. It's your chance to get the whole story and tell us what you think. We're taking your calls. Watch Cullen Devlin Thursday night at 8, only on WQEX 16. This is Dell and Rodney Trotter, two brothers who really love each other. Yeah, that's right. I've never thought of it like that. And though business has been rough... First we was marvellous, then we was fabulous. Now we're flogging one-legged turkeys from a three-wheel van. <laughs> With them, it's always share and share alike. It's everything between you and I split straight down the middle. 60-40. It's only fools and horses. Friday night at 7 and 7.30, here on WQEX 16. You know, as we get older, I think it is so important to try to simplify our lives. We've accumulated so much stuff. Look at this book. It's Organized Chaos, an interactive workbook to help you declutter, organize, and simplify your life. I have a professional organizer with me. Her name is Sylvia Jesse. Oh, Sylvia, I need you. I need you. 
the first thing is you don't have to be, you can be neat and still disorganized, right? Right. It's not the same thing. Neat is not the same thing as being organized. Okay. Being organized is being able to find what you need when you need it. <laughs> and not in this lifetime. Be, being neat is, is easy, I mean, because you can just throw everything in, in the drawer. Only if you're camouflage. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There are two different kinds of people. Now, go ahead. Show, show them the little sheet over there. The visual and the camouflage. Okay. If you are a visual person, this means that you want to put everything in the open. Right. You Have everything out where you can see it. Okay. Okay. And if you're camouflage, you want to hide everything away. Okay. Now, is it possible that we can be kind of a, a combination of both? Absolutely. Okay, let me see that list again. Let's go over this now and see what else. Um, a camouflage person wants the closet doors closed. Right. Are you a cam camouflage person? They want clean floor and chairs. You mean no papers on the floor? Right. Uh, They'll things. be under the desk. Okay. Hidden. That's, okay, but visual. Stuffed inside boxes. Aha, uh -huh, a kitchen. You go into people's kitchens. Right. There are some people that have everything out. out where you can see it on top of the cupboard, on top of the cupboards, on top of the counters. Okay. And then you go in and you see nothing in the kitchen. They've got it hidden away inside the cabinets. It still may not be organized though. But you can't find it. When, but you can't when, see it. Now, this, I know how important this is because I have one of these. Explain what this is and what you can do with it. This is a perfect example of what a visual person would do to help organize the top of their desk. And I know some of you at home are saying, I don't have a desk. If you're at home, you still have to deal with taxes. And it's a perfect time of year to talk about right, that. Right. Taxes, paying your bill, insurance. And if you put them, if you're a visual person and you put them inside the cupboard, you won't be able to find them and you won't remember to do them. But you can use the color coding and the staggered vertical file holder to remember them. You can see them always. They're not hidden. You know, this is such a wonderful thing that I've decided I'm going to put one in my kitchen. And, and what you do is you put the day of the week on, on each Right. File folder. Right. So an invitation comes in and it's for Saturday night. So you put it in the Saturday file. Or you have to go to the supermarket on Wednesday. You put your, I just figured this out right this minute. Wonderful. In the kitchen it's going to go. Okay. Uh, there are people who are grazers. What is a grazer? A grazer is someone who likes to have a lot of things going on at once. They tend to have 12 to 14 projects going on at one time. And they get bored if they only have two or three things going on at once. All right. The focused person. The focused me. person likes, dislikes interruptions, likes to have a lot of time to just do their research and do their work on their own. Mm -hmm. Don't bother them. Let them just work away and they'll be wonderful. All right. Now, there are some keys to getting organized. Mm -hmm. um, understand yourself. First key to getting organized is to understand yourself. The okay. second one is to declutter. As Alan said, we have way too much stuff that we're holding on to. And the third step is simplify, simplify, simplify. And in your, in your workbook, you even have a little schedule. You have a schedule for the grazer, and then you have a schedule for the focused worker as well. Right. And you have a lot of tips in there, too, about uh, eliminating some of the shoulds for, from your life. What do you mean by that? We are, we have enough problems with figuring out what kind of organizer we are without somebody else imposing what they think we should be doing on top of that. And from the time we were five years old, we've heard about what kind of organizer or how we should do things. First step is eliminate those shoulds, just get them out of your head, throw them in the corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. You can always pick them up later if you find you need them. But at the moment, we don't need them because I want to get to back to what your natural style is, the style before you started getting changed. And, and Sylvia, we can't expect to reinvent ourselves overnight. Yeah. Uh, we, we can take one little project at a time. Maybe you, you always tell the story about going into somebody's basement and they kept, what, 40 years of, of uh, canceled checks? Yes. And y your question was, for what? For what? Why? Why uh -huh. do you need them? Tell me why you need them. And if you have a really good reason, that's fine. But to help bring awareness in, why do you need them? And let's get rid of them if you don't need them. I'm guessing that maybe the greatest service that you provide your clients is that you give them permission to yes. throw things out. Yes. You say it's okay to throw this away. We make a game out of it. Lots of rat packs out there, right? A few. Okay.
Um, Organized Chaos is the name of Sylvia's company. Sylvia is the president, and I don't want to, yeah, I do want to ask, are you really organized? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to make sure because she has come up with an interactive workbook to help you declutter, organize, and simplify your life. And that is our goal. That's my newest goal, to simplify my life. Good. I want to thank Sylvia Jesse for helping us get organized. I want to thank all of you for watching. Be sure to join us next week for a look at cataract surgery. We're going to tell you the latest procedures for this very common operation. Until then, I'm Eleanor Shano, and remember, the good years start right here. Good night, everyone.